once Reconstruction ended, the people who were in charge of the South before the Civil War slowly started to regain power. And these people were not happy that their slaves were now freedmen. And so they began to pass a number of laws known as the Jim Crow laws. The Jim Crow laws were designed to isolate African Americans and place them in an inferior position compared to white people. This was the beginning of segregation in the post-Civil War South. In many Southern churches, people were taught that whites were the chosen people and that blacks were cursed. Here's some examples of Jim Crow laws. A black male and a white male could not shake hands because it implied that both were socially equal. Blacks and whites were not supposed to eat together. Now, if they did eat together, whites were to be served first and some sort of partition was to be placed between them. And under no circumstances was a black male to offer to light a cigarette of a white female. Whites did not use courtesy titles of respect when referring to blacks. For example, Mr., Mrs., Miss, Sir, or Ma'am. Now, instead, black people were called by their first name or some sort of derogatory term. White motorists had the right of way at all intersections. And lastly, if a black person rode in a car driven by a white person, the black person had to sit in the back seat or the back of a truck. Although it is perfectly clear that this is a violation of civil rights, the Supreme Court ruled the Jim Crow laws were constitutional in the Plessy versus Ferguson decision of 1896. Now, it wouldn't be until the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s that the Jim Crow laws would be recognized as illegal. Greensboro, North Carolina, Joseph McNeil, Franklin McCain, Ezell Blair Jr., and David Richmond entered a segregated lunch counter in Woolworth store and sat down. The four students tried to order food but refused service and asked to leave. The four stayed in their seats until the store closed that evening. The next day, students from all over North Carolina were joining the sit-ins and starting sit-ins of their own. The students were often met with violence, but remained nonviolent for the most part. The sit-in protests would soon begin taking place throughout the state and beyond, spreading as far as Virginia, Tennessee, and Mississippi. The sit-in protests were very effective. Protests helped to get media coverage of the unfair laws in the South, causing many segregated stores or restaurants to desegregate or close, making great strides in the civil rights movement and the quest for equality. During the 1960s, segregation was still a very large part of Southern culture in the United States. African Americans at the time were trying to resist the unfair racist laws through nonviolent protests and demonstrations of peaceful resistance inspired by Dr. King. One famous example were the Greensboro sit-ins. The protests provoked harassment and violence from those who were for segregation, but the students were not discouraged. The Greensboro Four would inspire others to take action against segregation, and as a result, hundreds of African Americans would join the sit-ins or start ones of their own. This would help to end segregation laws. 